Your Swinson. Mrs Humble and uh, I do very much welcome the fact that we're able to have this debate today and indeed uh, to, uh, to hope that this will be uh, one in a series of many debates on this issue which I think uh, do need to be had in this House uh, on, this, on this topic. And I do appreciate the Honourable Member for Barnsley Central's uh, desire to introduce balance in the, into the debate and I hope that I'll be able to uh, similarly introduce some balance into the debate today. Uh, I, I would first of all accept that the packaging manufacturing industry is a very important part of our manufacturing industry in the UK and indeed in my constituency I have SCA packaging um, who provide 150 jobs locally and so clearly are making a, a very a big uh, contribution to the local economy. And indeed, I will also accept that, that many parts of the industry are making great progress towards uh, reducing packaging. And uh, I think, as has already been mentioned, it's in uh, no manufacturer's interest to make packaging with more materials uh, than they need to do so from an economic point of view. Um, but I, I would just caution uh, against the, the feeling and the view that this isn't really an important issue because packaging only makes up 3% of landfill, which might be less than the food waste that we uh, throw away, because it is still a very important problem uh, in society. And I would draw the attention of honourable members to early day motion number 814, uh, which stands in my name on this issue, which has now been signed by 168 members of this House. So there's clearly a feeling uh, that this is a problem that does need to be addressed. And from a consumer's point of view, uh, they at least have some choice over whether or not to waste food and throw that in their bin, whether or not they will buy enough food uh, or, or whether or not it will, it will go to waste. The problem, I think, with some of the packaging that we find our products in today is that consumers are frustrated they don't necessarily have the choice. If they want to buy the product, they end up with packaging which they don't need and which, in many cases, they can't even recycle. This has been a, a particular uh, issue in areas which have moved to fortnightly collections uh, of landfill waste, which I know has, uh, has happened in, in areas up and down the country and indeed uh, happened in my area. And th at that point, consumers really started to worry about what was going in their bins. And that was when I started to get people really complaining to me because they could see the things they were able to put in the recycling bins. And they were frustrated at a lot of the things they were buying in the supermarket that were bulking up the things that they had to put in their landfill bin. And obviously, they now had to make that landfill bin last for two weeks rather than one. And so I think that's actually been one of the factors which has uh, heightened the, the salience of this issue uh, in the minds of our constituents uh, who have, have actually had to deal with that, uh, that, that impact. But of course, it does make good economic sense to minimise packaging. I think on light weighting in particular, there's been a huge amount of progress made by manufacturers. But as I mentioned earlier, I think part of the problem is not necessarily with the manufacturers of the packaging, but with the brands uh, and the, the producers of the products who let the marketing uh, men and women and the advertisers uh, into the decisions on how things are packaged. And I speak as a former marketing manager myself, although uh, thankfully uh, in marketing a radio station there wasn't really such an issue about packaging. Um, but, but I think that, that this is, is one of the major problems. Now, the Honourable Member for Barnsley Central said that you know, we wouldn't just want to have one brand of toothpaste uh, and, and obviously packaging is one way that brands can differentiate themselves on the supermarket shelves. And that's certainly true, but uh, I mean, as, as someone that used to work in marketing, I might even uh, hesitate to, to suggest that a way that brands might want to differentiate, differentiate themselves would be through the strength and quality of the actual product rather than what it came in. And uh, we've had the examples of the perfume bottles and, uh, and everything else, uh, which, which add huge amounts of apparent value added to, uh, to a product. But actually, what the consumer, I would have thought, would be interested in generally is actually, does the product work? Thank you. The possible anti-argument to that would be to say that by having packaging, you were able to state on the packaging what are the merits of your particular product rather than invite customers to try each one individually. I, I indeed, and my no, friend makes a very good point. And I, I'm, not, I'm not for a second arguing that we should have no packaging whatsoever uh, and that we should go back to just, uh, just taking products in, in one big bag and not have any uh, protective coatings or, uh, or, or boxes uh, for them to come in. Although I have to say that, uh, that I, I do recall the days of the body shop where you actually took back your own little bottle of your, your favourite body lotion or, or shampoo and got it refilled, which I think uh, is a shame that that seems to have gone by the by because of course, even though we all try to recycle, we need to remember the waste hierarchy and reusing is in fact the best thing that we can do with packaging. Um, so uh, on the marketing issue, I think, uh, I think there is some work still to be done there. And, and what I would suggest is that government does have some kind of role in this because obviously uh, if products do benefit by being bigger and uh, apparently better packaged than all of those around them, there will be that economic
economic incentive for more packaging. Whereas uh, if there is a level playing field created through uh, government regulation, and I know for the waste strategy, optimal packaging requirements is something which is being looked at, that will actually mean that companies can act in an environmentally responsible way and not be penalised for it uh, by competitors who perhaps would be less likely to do so. This is something consumers want. They want minimal and green packaging. Um, apparently, a recent survey by InkPen um, in the packaging industry said that 66% of people thought, said they thought overall products are overpackaged with either too many layers of packaging or packaging that is too large for the goods inside. And in fact, just in April, the Institute of Grocery Distribution found that 19% of shoppers said they specifically purchased products with recyclable packaging. So this is actually starting to be a driver uh, through the marketplace as well, although obviously that will be, that will be growing. To pick up on a point that the, the Honourable Gentleman for Castle Point made, uh, I think this is something which uh, our packaging industry actually should see as an opportunity. And if the government can provide support um, through research and development to enable companies to innovate, there's no reason at all why this can't be seen as something which is good for the industry to become a market leader uh, for the, the rest of the world in new innovative ideas, environmentally friendly, minimal packaging, which will obviously provide economic opportunities. So I think this is something the packaging industry should embrace, and I think parts of it certainly are doing so. Uh, but we do need to make sure the government the support is there, because although it may always be economically sensible to produce minimal packaging, perhaps sometimes the risk involved in innovating into new forms of environmentally friendly packaging uh, does not have an economic case up front. Something needs to be developed and researched first. So that support definitely needs to be there. Um, I just wanted to, again, pick up on the point my honourable friend for Solihull made about the, the waste issue and the shrink-wrapped cucumbers and turnips and, uh, uh, and whether or not, oh, indeed, my honourable friend for Southport raised this as well, um, and whether or not this is, is better. And, and I won't say I have a, 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 I don't know if I'm agnostic on the issue. I'm not sure I have a, a, a definitive answer on it. But I would just make the point that although certainly packaging on such goods can prolong their shelf life, there is also the issue that pre-packaged goods can actually mean we buy more of something than we need to do, hence 30% of food that we buy actually being thrown away. And this is a huge waste of resources, which is, uh, uh, is something which is, is difficult to justify, really. So there's, there's two sides to that argument there, and I'll leave members to, uh, uh, to, to, th to have their own thoughts on, on that. Um, I, I mentioned the, the company in my uh, constituency, SCA Packaging, uh, which employs 150 people. And the packaging they manufacture is corrugated cardboard packaging, um, primarily for the, the whisky industry, which is obviously one of uh, Scotland's great exports. And I think they're a good example of how companies can actually uh, be working in an environmentally friendly way. 75% of their cardboard is made from, recyclable, uh, from recycled material and 100% of their internal card waste gets recycled because they have an on-site paper mill to both provide and receive recycle it. Uh, and this is a, a good example and generally I think the cardboard industry um, is one where we're actually starting to get this right because 84% of the corrugated board used was recycled in 2005. Um, and so, you know, th those good recycling rates are there. But in order to get that up from 84% higher, um, we actually need to get consumers recycling cardboard more. And while the industry can be very good at the recycling of the packaging within the supply chain, which is used in transit, which is the majority of packaging, of course, and it, the stuff that consumers see is actually a small amount, it's obviously harder to get the consumer recycling stuff done because you're talking about smaller quantities in individual homes. Uh, but it is obviously very important, both for consumers, uh, but also for us to get those rates up even higher. And one of the things which is, is um, I suppose, slightly depressing is that if you look at where cardboard is collected on the doorsteps across the UK, in England and Wales, it's only about a third of local authorities that do this, 125 out of 374 councils. Scotland is a little better at 37%, 12 of the 32 councils. But obviously that means there's huge parts of the country where uh, consumers are not able to easily recycle cardboard, which often, given it's bulky, is, is not so handy to just take down to recycling banks, even if they are provided. And I have, I have to say from personal experience, um, uh, cardboard recycling on the doorsteps in Eastern Bartonshire was brought in uh, over a year ago now, and it made a huge difference about uh, what ended up going to the, the black landfill bin. I, I noticed that myself, when you take the cardboard out of the waste stream. So we really ought to be, um, I think, putting pressure on local authorities and making it easier for local authorities um, to recycle more cardboard. 
Um, there's obviously been some, some uh, interesting uh, developments that the government has brought forward with the waste strategy uh, published so recently. Um, and in terms of uh, looking to uh, properly enforce the essential requirements uh, regulations. And I am intrigued that the government is talking about having more effective enforcement a um, action. Uh, but there isn't a lot of detail yet about what this will actually mean. And one of the problems at the moment is that it's up to trading standards to, uh, to, to prosecute and to enforce these regulations. They're very overstretched. And as we all know, there's been very few prosecutions on this basis. It may be time to look at having some kind of national body that, such as what used to exist to look at the issue of packaging and, uh, and bring forward uh, prosecutions where companies are clearly flouting the regulations. Um, in conclusion, Mrs Humble, uh, I, I think that this debate has been very welcome and I hope it is the, the first of many. There's lots of parts of the industry are making great progress towards reducing packaging, but there is much more to do and the government, I believe, must take a lead in reducing packaging waste further with tough targets and effective enforcement. Green minimal packaging makes good economic sense and it makes sense for manufacturers, for consumers and for the environment. Really